it's so great to have you here in Szczecin, on Radio Szczecin. A big honor for us. Well, it's uh, great to be here also. Uh, it's been uh, several years since I've been in, uh, in the country, in Poland. I did Warsaw several years ago and a big festival uh, a couple of years ago. But it's great to be here in, in, in uh, the session. How do you pronounce the city? Szczecin. Szczecin. Great to be in session. Maybe to start with, uh, Kula and the Gang was formed in 1964. So if I'm counting this right, it's been 50th anniversary last year. I imagine there must have been a celebration. So how did you celebrate? You know what? We're still celebrating. <laughs> last year and this year. But great things. We got the um, Star in Hollywood out in California. Last year we got the uh, Lifetime Achievement Award for the Soul Train shows. We also were in inducted into New Jersey Hall of Fame. We've just been having a big party. It's been great. If we are talking about the beginnings, if we take it back to the 60s before all the music labels and big singles, how did you start playing together? Where did you have your first concerts? Well, we started uh, in uh, Jersey City. That's where the band started. We worked in the uh, nightclubs, uh, we worked for different uh, high school. We were still young, you know. I was only 14 years old. We worked around uh, New Jersey and New York. Uh, at that time, we called ourselves the Jazzy Acts. And then we changed the name to the Soul Town Band. And then we changed the name again to Cool and the Flames. And then finally, in 1968, we changed the name to Cool and the Gang, and we came out with our very first record in 1969 called Cool and the Gang. Yeah, and is this true? that your father was actually an owner of a gym and that he was a boxer and you had a chance to practice with Miles Davis who also wanted to be a boxer? Yeah. Well, my father didn't own the gym. He used to train at the gym. But Miles used to come over and Miles wanted to be a boxer and uh, he would... Uh, want to get up and uh, spar a little bit. But my father, my father said, well, Miles, you really can't look at this as a career for you because if you end up getting your lip busted or anything like that, you know, you won't be able to play trumpet anymore. But yes, all that happened. Miles was a friend of my father's, along with the loneliest mark. It's actually great that with so many influences about sport, you chose music. Was this the plan all along or did you think about any other careers? Well, music, because music was in the family. My grandmother played piano. My father was always around different musicians. When he fought in Cuba, you know, people like Dizzy Gillespie and other uh, jazz players uh, would go to Cuba and play. And so when I was born, he gave me a name of a uh, bass player and keyboard player called Dodo Monteroso El Riquico out of Cuba. And not knowing that I was going to be a bass player, I did box for one year, though, a place called Elmar, New York. I, it was like the uh, Pee Wee League. <laughs> and I boxed for one year. I was about uh, 11 years old. Yeah. We know your music from so many different movies, just to name Pulp Fiction and Jungle Boogie. Maybe not everybody remembers that your song was also on Saturday Night Fever. How did this happen? Well, it was a part of our, I guess you call it evolution of Cool in the Gang, being blessed to be on various music soundtracks. The very first one was uh, the movie Rocky with Sylvester Stallone. The song was called Summer Madness. And then it was uh, Saturday Night Fever with Open Sesame. And then there was many more after that, uh, Pulp Fiction, uh, Be Cool by John. We've been in three movies with John Travolta. Our music has been in three of John Travolta's movies, you know? So it's been great. Well, talking about other people using your music for movies, we also have to talk about samples. You probably heard hundreds of songs using your music, but do you remember some kind of situations that actually you heard a song that sampled your work and you thought, wow, that's a great track. I like it. Well, there was a couple, actually. You know, uh, we uh, put people on sample patrol. <laughs> go out and find out who sampled our music. But a big one was uh, Will Smith with the song Summertime. It became a very big record for him. Matter of fact, uh, it was the number one record in the country. And he also, he won a Grammy with that song. You know, another one was with uh, Puff Daddy now. And he called himself uh, Diddy with a uh, group Mace. You know, they sampled Hollywood Swinging. And then there was Janet Jackson, Madonna, the list goes on and on and on. You played concerts with, for instance, Jackson 5 or Chaka Khan, but you didn't limit yourself only to soul and funk. So how was it to play with Van Halen, for instance? Wonderful. We did 48 shows. David Lee Roth uh, saw us in London. We were playing for the uh, Glastonbury Festival. That week they had U2 and 
Paul Simon, a lot of big rock groups. And uh, David Sauce, and he went back, you know, uh, to uh, the other members of, of Van Halen. He said, "Listen, I got the perfect group to be." And he said, and the way that he put it, he wouldn't, he didn't put it as a, being an opening act. He said to be a star attraction along with us. Man, he said we used to play your music in clubs back in uh, L.A. back uh, in the '70s. He said that um, in the '80s, you guys had big hits like Ladies' Night Celebration, and he said they have jumped, they had their big records, and they were like the pop rock uh, dance band or whatever, and we were the R&B pop dance band. He said he felt that it made sense to do. He said then 60 percent, he said, of my audience are ladies, and you'll see. And you guys wrote the song Ladies' Night. Your album from 1972 is called "Music Is the Message." How would you summarize, you know, your message in the music? Well, music, uh, I guess I can say, transcends, you know, politics and everything else around the world. And the people hear good music and song, you know, it becomes a good message, you know. And you had a lot of various groups that have written great songs, from the OJ's to the things that uh, U2 does, different groups, from Paul Simon. We did in South Africa, you know. And music is a message, and hopefully we'll. They'll hear more of the message, and maybe the world will be a better place today. Are there any artists that you adore and cherish throughout all those years since you started your career? Well, Stevie Wonder is one. Of course, you know uh, the accomplishment of the Beatles. You know the Rolling Stones. You talk about in the Motown days, you know, the Temptations. There was a lot of great groups, you know, that have been influenced with Sly and the Family Stones, James Brown. <laughs> I can go on and on. I've seen uh, your concerts planned in the United States or Japan. What are your other music plans for the future? Uh, well, we're working on a new record. Finally, after seven years, and we hope to come out with a new single in February. We're also uh, been talking to some. People people in New York and Vegas are doing a musical, Cool and the Gang musical. We are finally doing our first book. We're signing the contracts next week and hopefully we'll do the Cool and the Gang movie. Well, that will be all so great. A lot, of, a lot of work to do right now still. I hope you will also come back to Poland. Oh yes, we will. Yeah, we will. Thanks a lot for the interview. It was a great honor to have you on Radio Szczecin. Oh, thank you.